What's up guys, Adam here. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about the differences between the two and four stroke engines. I'm gonna be using dirt bike engines to show you guys this. This is gonna apply to all engines. The basic principles are gonna be the same. So I'm gonna start off showing you guys what's mechanically different between them. I'm gonna be using a whiteboard with some drawings on it as well as some real parts to show you guys the differences and then after that we're going to get to the exciting part which is going to be the performance side all right guys i'm going to go get the whiteboard i hope you guys enjoy the video and learn something new today okay guys so what i have laid out here is a diagram of the four stroke and two stroke engines i wanted to start off basic here and just explain the differences between these on a whiteboard so you guys could see the internals of them Okay, so now that we're looking at the four stroke engine, what I've done is I've laid out f all four of the different strokes and I'm gonna go over with you guys what happens in each of these strokes and how it's gonna be different from the two stroke engine. So basically on the intake stroke on a four stroke engine, the intake valve opens up and fuel and air mixture comes down into the cylinder, creating a ready to burn mixture in the cylinder. So the compression stroke is pretty simple. Both our valves are closed and our piston is traveling upwards in the cylinder and compressing the fuel and air mixture that we took in during the intake stroke. After our hot gas and air was compressed on the compression stroke, we have an ignition or a combustion event where that gas expands upon combustion and pushes our piston down in the cylinder, thus creating power. We have a power stroke every fourth stroke on a four stroke and this is what drives and keeps the motor going. Now that we have all these hot gases from our power stroke, we need to relieve them from the cylinder. So how we're going to do this is we open the exhaust valve and the piston is going to travel upwards and all those gases are going to travel out of the exhaust valve. Alright, now that you guys understand the four stroke engine there, I'll move on and explain the two stroke engine to you guys. I'm going to start off with the compression stroke because it's a little easier to understand and then we'll move on to the stroke here on the left. So the first main difference here that we see with the two stroke is overhead there's no valves like the four stroke so we're just compressing against a solid dome that does not have any valves in it. Our valves are going to be ports on the side of the cylinder wall. And I have these ports labeled here on the diagram on the left so we have our exhaust port and our intake port. And in this diagram, since it's two-dimensional, I only put in one intake port. Usually, you're going to have multiple intake ports. Okay, so on the two-stroke engine here on the right, I have a compression stroke going. And basically, the main difference between the two-stroke and the four-stroke on the compression stroke is that the two-stroke compression stroke starts after it passes the ports and has the fresh fuel and air mixture, as opposed to the four-stroke, which has the valves overhead that you're compressing up to. On a two-stroke, it's just a solid dome up here. But basically, the same thing is happening here as it would on a four-stroke engine. You're compressing your fuel and air against a cylinder head and getting it ready to ignite. So as you're compressing your fuel and air on a two-stroke, that's not the only thing that's happening. You're actually doing more things down in the crankcase. So what I've drawn here is a one-way valve on a two-stroke. This one that I drew is going to be a reed valve. I know some engines use like a Rotax valve, which is a rotating plate that goes around. Um, but they're all going to be the same principle. It's just a one-way valve. So the other thing that's happening on the two-stroke engine is our piston is traveling upwards in the cylinder and then creating a low pressure environment in the crankcase. So basically think of like a super soaker, you're drawing up a piston and then it's creating a low pressure drawing in fuel and air and then on a two stroke you're gonna draw in some lubrication but you're basically drawing in fuel and air into the crankcase from the carburetor. So that's pretty much gonna be it for our compression stroke. So now we're gonna look at this other stroke here and see how the two stroke engine's gonna do its power, exhaust and intake. So what is happening in this cylinder diagram here right now is the fuel and air mixture we just compressed in the other cylinder is pushing down on the piston and looking for somewhere to escape. So as it's pushing down and trying to escape, everywhere it's closed off except for exhaust port that has just started to open here and all that fuel and air is going to want to flow out into our exhaust. So now at this point our piston has came down and it's completely past the exhaust port and most of our exhaust gases have flowed out of there. Not only that, but we have also passed down past the intake port and now it is completely open. And at this point in the cylinder, it's actually going to be a low pressure environment because we're compressing down to the bottom end, creating a higher pressure in the bottom end. So this will close off our valve there and not allow any more fuel and air into the bottom end. 
but the high pressure down on the bottom end needs to release somewhere so it's going to want to travel to the low pressure so it's going to come up through our transfer ports here onto the top of the piston and that's what brings our fuel and air into the cylinder also the fuel and air may move out of the exhaust port just because so much is coming in and the two-stroke engine is a little bit inefficient and then what a little bit of what happens here is called exhaust scavenging. So our fuel and air goes into the exhaust system, but there's actually a sonic wave that comes back through the exhaust. And right before the piston covers up that exhaust port to go into compression, it'll push some of that fuel and air back into the cylinder. And that's why two strokes have the bigger exhaust. But I'll go more into depth on that in another video. And now that I've showed you guys how everything works, I want to show you the parts so you guys have an actual visual in your head of what's going on. So the big shiny pipe here is the two-stroke pipe, and then the skinny one here is the four-stroke pipe. And as you can see, the two-stroke pipe is a lot bigger than the four-stroke pipe. And the reason for this is because the two-stroke pipe is tuned for the two-stroke engine. And I'll get into the reason why that it's tuned for the engine on a two-stroke in a later video. But basically, all you need to know for now is that there's a wave, a sonic wave that goes through the pipe and gets deflected off the cone and comes back to the engine. And then as far as the four-stroke engine, you do not need a really big pipe like a two-stroke. It's not going to help you get your gases out any quicker. Actually, a smaller pipe that's sized right for your engine will help the gases go out a little bit quicker. So if you got a lot of upgrades on there, maybe you do want to go up a little bit in size or get a FMF Mega Bomb. But for most applications, the stock header pipe is going to be a good size for your engine. So while we're talking about exhaust, you might as well get into sound. So a two-stroke is going to have a higher pitch rev to it. And then the four strokes going to have a lower pitch kind of growl to the engine. And I want to show you an example of the actual cylinder head off of a four stroke engine. So these are your valves here. This is your intake valve on the right and then your exhaust valve on the left. And if we look here, these are the same valves that I have drawn up here that are opening and closing during the engine running. And then on the four stroke overhead, you have your camshafts, and this is what open and closes the valves as opposed to a two stroke, it's just the piston uncovering them. So as these camshafts go around, these lobes, as you can see it's moving, they push open the valve from the top. Then the two-stroke cylinder head is going to be much simpler than the four-stroke. We just have a simple dome here, some cooling ports, and then a spark plug hole. That's pretty much all that's going on on this two-stroke cylinder head. So if we just take a quick look here at the two-stroke cylinder, we could see it's a lot more complex than the two-stroke cylinder head and also the four-stroke cylinder. And then if we take a look at our intake or transfer ports here, this is what intakes the fuel and air that I was showing you on the diagrams from the suction of the engine. And then if we look farther into the engine, we can see our exhaust port here. It's the biggest port, and that's what's taking our exhaust gases out during the engine's operation. And then also I'll show you guys the reed valve here. This is the one-way valve on the two-stroke engine, and you can see if I push open these tabs, it's able to let fuel and air in, or if they're closed off, I can't let any fuel and air in. And then as far as lubrication on a two-stroke engine, you're going to have, as I said earlier, a premix that goes in with your fuel and air that goes into the cylinder, and then also a gear oil. And then the four-stroke, you're just going to have a gear oil that's gone all the way through the engine, so it's going to get pumped up into your top end and lubricate pretty much everything. Okay, guys, so now that I've showed you how the two- and four-stroke engines operate and all the differences they have in how they operate, I'm going to jump into performance, which is really the exciting part, and I'm going to show you guys which engines and bikes perform better in different situations and which ones I prefer. So when it comes to handling between the two and four stroke bikes, they're going to be pretty similar. So I mentioned earlier that the two stroke engine is going to be a little bit lighter than the four stroke engine. And that is true. But that being said, if you look at KTM's 250 engine, the two stroke is only three kilograms lighter than their 254 stroke. So I know two or three kilograms doesn't sound like very much to you guys, but it actually makes a bigger difference than you think. So the two stroke engine sits lower in the bike. The four stroke engine sits a little bit higher and this weight up high is what causes the bike when you're riding a, like a 450 four stroke or even a 250, you feel it's like a little bit more heavy because you have that top 
center of gravity so as you start to lean that bike you have more mass coming with you as opposed to a lower center of gravity it's going to stay more centered so that in the w450f by yamaha they move the engine from having this kind of angle to straight up and down and what that does is it kind of centers out that center of gravity to make it less noticeable on the four stroke but still in handling situations assuming your suspension set up perfectly for you because really you're going to get a lot of results out of setting up your suspension but assuming you have your suspension set up correctly i personally prefer the two stroke in most handling situations so now we can get into what you guys probably prefer and what's the fun part and that's power so the two stroke engine gets power for every two movements of the piston. So because of that, two strokes are actually gonna have more power per size of engine. So per CC, two strokes are gonna have more power. I think on the KTM 250s, the 250 two stroke has 10 more horsepower than the 254 stroke. And that's pretty surprising difference. Though KTM does make the best two strokes in my opinion because they have so much research into it. All the other manufacturers stop researching them, but it's gonna have 10 more horsepower than the four strokes. So that's pretty interesting to me. And it used to be, even though the two strokes had more power, without the power valve, they came on hard and fast, like in the 80s. They were, they were hard to handle, but now they had the power valve. So that makes them a little bit more controllable on their power curve, but it's not as controllable as a four stroke. So even though the four strokes don't have as much power, so they have a more steady power curve that's going to be more linear and controllable and in turn that's going to give you a little bit more traction and going to be a lot easier to ride especially on a supercross track where you want predictability when you're getting your power down or on even hill really high hill climbs when you want more traction the four strokes the way to go the two stroke is going to give you some revs especially in loose stuff and you're going to start to lose traction so that four stroke you're going to know where that power is and when it's coming a little bit better and i think that's why they're preferred so personally guys i've been sharing all this information with you guys trying to stay unbiased as possible and give you guys honest information about these two different styles of bikes but what i personally prefer is going to be the two stroke i'm assuming you guys probably know that i'm building a two stroke i enjoy them but i just want to be honest with you guys and i know a lot of you guys like four strokes and that's great so i wanted to give you guys equal information on both of them and kind of share the differences if I was a professional rider in supercross, motocross, I would prefer the four stroke for sure in those situations because that's what's just been successful in those situations. They're easier to ride, they're more predictable. I wanna know what you guys prefer. If you guys prefer a two or a four stroke, let me know down in the comments and we can chat about it. All right guys, well, I appreciate you watching the video. I hope it was educational and also entertaining for you guys. If you guys learned something, hit that like button for me and I'll keep these videos coming. Next week, I will be assembling the CR125 because I should have all the parts in. Okay guys, I'll catch you next time.